Easy Ride is a nonprofit and we're a transportation management association um, promoting biking and walking and safe streets. And um, so we applied with the city of Passaic uh, in this, I won't give you the background because that's real. Um, and uh, we were funded uh, to do a, a project this year. Um, we're funded by Bloomberg Philanthropies and um, we'll, we're gonna go on and we'll talk more about it. So go ahead early and show the next slide in the video. We've not only made the intersection safer, we've not only made it more beautiful, but we're doing the two together. Antes de este proyecto, algunas veces los carros no ponían suficiente atención para los pedestrians, pero este proyecto va a traer la atención. Art can make people dream, imagine a different way to see their city. Awesome. So now we're going to turn it over to Arlea to give you some background. Hi, I'm Arlea. I'm going to give you some background. So we did a demonstration project on at Passaic, a block away from the intersection we're going to be working with. The picture on the left shows us after painting it. On the back, you can see we painted like a sun or star with mm -hmm. the sky background. So we did a similar project really, really, really close. And the situation was that four pedestrians and four cyclists were hit by cars. Uh, between January 2020 and April 2023. So this area actually has a lot of uh, crashes, sadly. So the purpose of this is to increase the visibility of people walking and reduce crashes. Thankfully, the city as a result will now paint high visibility crosswalks and install traffic signals in this location, which is Monroe Street and Hope Avenue. And this is what it looks like before and after. So before the street, simple black street, uh, very simple lines for crosswalk. In the new street, we added curb extensions with the yellow lines, uh, lines in the middle for the ladder kind of crosswalk. And uh, someone, we actually took surveys of participant of people in the area, and someone said, le da vida a la calle, which means it brings life to the street, which is the kind of impact we want in the community. So this is the new intersection that we will be working with. It is one block away from the old. It's Monroe Street and Columbia Avenue in Passaic. Um, the history is that there's been three crashes, uh, three pedestrian crashes, one cyclist, and 28 vehicle crashes between the same time period I said last time. So still a really dangerous intersection, and we hope to um, make it better with your art. Okay, so designing safe streets. This is also me. Okay, so speed impacts traffic safety. So traffic speed is fixable. It's um, like we like to say, there are no accidents, there are crashes because we can find solutions to them. So road designs is really important. Um, if you can tell by the picture below, on the left, if a person is hit by a car traveling at 20 miles an hour, they have a nine out of 10 chance of surviving, which is pretty high, pretty good. But on the right, a car going only 40 miles an hour, not that fast all in all, can they a person has only a one out of 10 chance of surviving. So that 20 mile an hour difference may not seem like a lot, but it leads to very drastic differences in outcomes. So by painting art, we hope to reduce the speed. So traffic calming is reducing vehicle speed through infrastructure improvements. So on the left, we have uh, what's known as a, a 
a roundabout. It's not a real roundabout, actually. Um, but that's not the point. It's just a circ circular path that cars have to travel around. It slows them down when they're traveling around. In the middle, we have in the middle and right, we have curb extensions. So the curb is pushed inward. So that the traveling distance between crossing the street is shortened. So that's a much safer outcome. And this is someone else. I think me, I guess. Um, so Alea talked a little bit about this um, by making a sharper uh, degree turn with a physical built um, corner. It makes cars have to slow down to make that tight uh, turn. Um, you can see also, you know, at the top, it's got like a very rounded corner. So cars can easily quickly zip around that. Um, and they don't really have to slow down. But as you go down to 30 degree and then to a 15 degree angle, the cars really have to slow down to make that turn safely. And as well, you can see how the crosswalk, the distance and earlier, maybe you can just use your cursor to show them, right? It's a much shorter crossing at the bottom versus at the top, it's much longer. Next, with the crosswalks, um, those that have more paint, like more, more striping um, versus the top where it's just two lines, um, those are more visible to drivers as they are approaching the intersection. And uh, the tendency then is to for drivers to slow down because they are actually more aware of uh, the crosswalk and that there might be pedestrians crossing. Curb extensions can either be built or they can be painted. In this case, they are built, and you can see that um, they've jutted, they jut out into the actual roadway so that the people waiting to cross in the corner, you can see in the picture like a person in a wheelchair, um, are more visible to the drivers, um, and also it shortens the crossing. So, But this can also be done with paint. And in this case, they also put some planting into the curb extension to give it some green, probably to help absorb rain, which we know is a big problem nowadays with flooding, uh, especially in the city of Passaic, it's right near the river. So um, these, are, these are different things that can be done to um, slow drivers, but also to make the people crossing more easily seen, and also to help the people who are crossing more easily see the cars coming. You know, the, the problem is that in the past, in this next slide, you can see that there have been bollards that were put in or delineators um, around the curb extensions. And those also help to prevent cars from parking all the way up against the corner. This is a big issue that they have in, in Passaic. A lot of delivery drivers, people will just drive up, double park on the corner, pop into the corner store or the bakery to try and you know buy something. And when they double park there, it actually makes it harder for the pedestrian to see around them. And we've heard about people who um, really couldn't see, they didn't stick their heads out around the vehicles, stepped out and boom, got hit by a car. So by doing this, it prevents those cars from parking on the corners and it allows both the people to be seen standing on the corner by the drivers, but it also allows the people to see cars that are coming. And that's really important for safety. And now Adam is going to talk about using art. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we got a few examples here. Like we talked about curb extensions already. And then um, here's the intersection mural in the center that Athena did. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, crosswalk art. All right. So just here's an example of uh, how much of a difference um, paint in the right spots can make. As you can see on the left is the before picture, and then uh, after the paint was added on the right, it's much more visible. Um, you know, as a someone who's going to drive, I'm probably going to pay attention to what's going on there and just make it easier and uh, safer for everyone involved. And they give them a little island there too, Adam. So mm -hmm. like if, if you have seniors, that little yeah, island, and... yeah, they can stop and rest there because now it's it's clear that the cars can't drive in that middle section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, the median refuge right there on the left in the after mm -hmm. picture. And then here are some curb extension examples. Yep. 
Um, very colorful. The deline uh, the combination with the delineators, you know, make it known that cars are not supposed to be in that area. Mm -hmm. If you're curious about how to participate um, in the um, design and uh, how to enter the the selection, um, we're going to pick either one artist or a group of artists, if it's a group, and uh, they'll be awarded three thousand um, dollars for the design and installation of the project. Um, and the winner uh, will design and lead the painting of the intersection and uh, help us with the community's involvement. Um, so the design must include an intersection mural, curb extensions, um, and crosswalk designs. Another example of the intersection mural, right? We just want to try and keep it simple, symbiotic, brightly colored. Uh, but not too distracting for uh, drivers or pedestrians. And we want to tr try to avoid to have any words. And the benefit is that it's going to, you know, keep um, drivers more attentive and pay attention um, and decrease vehicle speeds and crashes. Yeah, and he said symbiotic, but I think he meant symmetrical. Like a lot of the designs you've seen in some of the Bloomberg ones, they're not necessarily symmetrical. But if it is symmetrical, it, it might be not as distracting. Yep, and just here's a very colorful crosswalk here. Uh, bright colors, you know, slow, help slow the drivers down. Um, looking for six inch gaps between crosswalk lines. Um, we're trying to avoid yellow though, so that um, it's not mistaken for official uh, road yellow. Um, and then also avoid um, blue and uh, green like bike lanes. Uh, also some red and yellow as well, but um, we strongly encourage you to consider pastel colors. Okay, Jensi. Right, so in this uh, in this presentation, we gave you a lot of the limitations that are put on us uh, while, while creating this project, but the reality is that you also have a lot of creative um, input that, that is allowed as well. Uh, so, so, so some of the things that we're looking for in you include that you must be over the age of 16, which everybody here is. Um, we, we expect you to actually plan out all the materials necessary for your project and, uh, you're free to uh, include bollards or, uh, or any of the other materials that we saw in the, in the previous slides. Uh, on the day of the installation, you will be leading and you will be able to delegate towards um, many volunteers, including everybody uh, on Easy Ride and on the Easy Ride team that you see here. We're all going to be there and you can delegate to us uh, as well as any volunteers that may be there. So like I said, you'll be leading and uh, you're expected to trace uh, your design out on, to scale on the intersection. And then finally, just put the finishing touches on to make it as beautiful as it can be and your final vision. And it's not just going to be us there. We're, they're planning to have a DJ. It's going to be like a lot of people. So it should be a fun, a fun. There may be food. Day. I did hear there may be food. Yes. So this template here is uh, going to be the uh, initial um, filter for our, uh, for our artists, right? They can fill in anywhere that they see white. They can do so using any of the templates in that this link leads to. There's PDF, PNG, anything like that. You even have the option to print it out and uh, paint manually if that's your thing or digitally. Uh, regardless, uh, like we saw earlier, uh, the center includes the uh, actual intersection mural, which is arguably the most important part of this project. Uh, the crosswalks uh, are also super important. They add visibility for any uh, pedestrians that are crossing the street. And the curb extensions uh, are those curves that we see there. Um, they're meant to in increase visibility and stop uh, cars from parking too close to the corner. Uh, so anywhere you see white. And we urge you to be creative, uh, always remembering to avoid certain colors and uh, symmetry is crucial and no lettering and any other rules that I, may, I might be forgetting. So the deadline, is February 18th. Uh, am I wrong saying that that might be subject to change or? No, we're, I think we're going to stick with it. Okay, we're going to stick to this. Yeah, please, so... please submit. You can submit sooner even if, you have, if you're ready. There's Absolutely. no reason. Don't wait till the last minute. 
uh, you are also allowed to submit more than one design. You can actually on the on the form it says to please submit. Uh, I believe it says three. Mm -hmm. uh, you can technically submit up to five, although like you know. But yeah, so we have it in both English and in Spanish. But everybody here speaks English, and all the details are there. Uh, that being said, if after this presentation you still have questions, uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, we will be here to help you throughout this process. Yeah, I think that's the next slide, right? Go ahead, Earlier. Right. So you can you can email me if you have any questions at any time. Um and I will get back to you right away. And um I'm pretty sure like the reason you explained, right? I I guess I was kind of distracted by somebody entering right at that. And I thought it was early. I wasn't sure what was happening. But the reason, the only reason that we ask you not to use certain colors is because uh the manual of uniform, um, MUT, manuform uniform transportation. <laughs> MUT, but New Jersey has the um has very specific rules about certain colors and what they mean, like you know, so um so they don't really want you to use those exact same colors. But if you just shade it a little bit differently, like you know, then the Americans for Disability Act blue, there's stop sign red, there's, you know, yellow, double line. You can still choose a bright yellow. It doesn't have to be a pastel. It just should not be that exact same kind of yellow that you see, you know, on those yield signs or that you'll see them, they paint on the curbs where people shouldn't park. Pick a slightly different shade. And as, as many of you are artists, I don't think that will be difficult for you. It doesn't have to be pastel, so, right? So, um, personally, I don't think I would pick a pastel, but but what they're just saying is, you know, you're safe with the pastels because there aren't any pastel colors like that are used for um, traffic, um, road signage, you know, pavement signage. It's like they'll have they'll have a the engineers will have a problem with it. But you know, even if you do, it's not a big deal. We're gonna pick the winner based on the design that we like and the colors. We can always have people change it. So, you know, if you're really into like using certain colors for your design and um, as long as you're willing to be, a, you know, maybe we might ask you to slightly change it if, it if you are selected as the winner because we don't want to get in trouble with, you know, the state of New Jersey. <laughs> so, right. Does anyone have any questions right now that we can answer? Um, question, um, when, um, are you planning to get this project going? Like on what day? What's what's your start date? Oh, very good question. Very good question. So we're looking to do the installation. Hopefully, if everything works out right, we've got to get um, the approvals and the permits. So we're looking to hopefully do this mid-April. I think the dates we tentatively set are April 13 or 14, or the rain date, possibly the 28th. Now, last April, it was raining, 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 raining. So, you know, April showers, we're hoping, but, you know, we're also flexible. If it just rains that whole month, then, you know, we'll have to find a day, obviously, where it's not raining, where the road has had time to dry and all of that. Okay. How, thank you. How many volunteers are you giving for this project? Like, so how many volunteers will the artist have? We can't tell you that right now, but I think what Gen C was saying is you definitely will have us. There will other be other people. I would say we're going to try to really make it a big community gathering party. So I would say probably like at least 20 to 25, maybe even more people. Oh. This is going to be a big deal, right? They're going to shut down that whole intersection. So we're hoping that a lot of the locals will come okay. out. Is it one day project? Is that the goal? The goal is one day project. From what yes, time? But, what you know, time? obviously we sketch from morning to the, you know, until down. dusk. Yeah, exactly. Because we'll be doing engagement with public, getting their opinion as well that afternoon. So hopefully all day. Um, last year, I know when we did the temporary project, we weren't able to actually get started until around 10 because the police wanted to let, you know, the people go through for their normal commute time. So we didn't actually get the road closed until 10. Mm -hmm. But um, but th that was different. That was a temporary project with washable paint. This is going to be a permanent thing. So 
we'll hopefully see if we can get started earlier. That whole area is like a big grid. So there's no reason why someone has to drive down that particular street, is in my opinion. So I have a question. Yes. Um, does the three thousand dollars include um supplies and paint? Or no, no, we will pay for we will pay for the paint separately. So that three thousand dollars is totally for you know the winning artist, and or okay. you know like Jency talked about it like in case you know someone wanted to enter and have like a team, a person you know help them paint and then they win it together. They'll just have to split that three thousand though. So like if you choose to collaborate with another you know couple of artists, then you will be splitting your part of the. $3,000. So it's a $3,000 prize, but also lots of glory. I, so I just want to emphasize that I know it's not a huge amount, especially for those of you who are professional artists, you know, like for some, like for Rhea, who already also sounds like she's already a professional artist, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a cap for her to put in her resume. Many of the rest of you are already have many things, but I think what's nice about this is it is, you will get global publicity because it's Bloomberg right? So they only picked 25 winners this year. And I I think if you look at, go back and look at the, the links, and I'm happy to send to you, or if, even if you just Google Bloomberg Asphalt Art Project, you can rewatch the video. You can, they have a study about why they're doing this. You can look at the other visuals. Um, so that's probably a good suggestion for some of you, but, um, but yeah, I think hopefully- I Go ahead. Yeah. Um, my only observation or, and I've, I've done, as I mentioned before, about two and a half, three of these. Um, and they each taken two days. Are you guys, um, strictly sticking to one day or are you open to multiple days if, if the design effort is more complicated and requires a second day? I think we're open. To that's permanent. Yeah, no, we're open to it. We're open to it because that's why I said, um, you know, the initial thing was 13 and 14, which is the Saturday and the Sunday. Okay. We'll just have to make, confirm that, you know, obviously with the city, but I think, you know, they, they won't have school that's not like a work day. So hopefully that allows for that full weekend, you know, if needed. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> For the supplies, uh, like let's say if I prefer to use a certain type of paint or for for the flooring, are you guys going with it or it's a certain brands you're working with? So no, I can... definitely we're open to that. We're open we... to the type of paint that you're open to. I mean, within our budget. We, we are. Pretty... Sorry, I just wanted to mention because we do have we, we met with Bloomberg and they talked about different paints. They have um they have a list that I downloaded about paints and what paints are preferable on asphalt so i can share that with with you all later like okay. working artists later um so we can talk about it because some paint gets slippery later when it when it wears down a little more um with rain or anything else that can happen so we want to avoid those um but i mean athena you have experience so i i think you <laughs> you know a little more too so and that, that's why i'm asking because i mean obviously it's not a lot of money for for me so i would want to make sure that whatever art i do it's actually going to stay as long as possible so number one i would like to use paint that will stay as long as it can and also can you guys have like a dpw or someone to uh, do a power wash a few days of Yes, yes but, that's yeah. definitely happening and also they they actually talked about mixing in a certain amount of grit as well, so that even if um, they mentioned in, in one of the, the workshops or meetings that we had was that someone actually put a um, a sealer over it, but they mixed it with some grit so that it wasn't as slippery. So that they have- What color would that be though? Hmm? What color would the grit be? I think the grit is actually in the paint and then they put the sealer over it. So it's still going to have, you know, like it's not going to be so smooth. I don't know. I mean, I'm not an artist, <laughs> but that's I, all I can tell you is what I remember what they mentioned. And I think like that's, you know, we're, we're looking for artists so that the artists can hopefully also be involved with some of these uh, training sessions that they're having. But, you know, um, because I mean, done this all over the I, like, I, I love using the traffic paint because that's the one that actually um, stays the longest and it's the thinnest one and it's not latex based. So it doesn't 
come off easily and it still like gives you that grip on the actual asphalt but i mean unfortunately it only comes in like five colors so that would need to be prefixed ahead of time so i mean how flexible are you guys of uh, us meeting somewhere or you dropping it off at my studio for me to do the mixing because it definitely needs to be done ahead of time yeah i mean i think some of these questions are questions that uh, do you think they need to be handled right now we're just trying to look for the concept and the design and our artist and then like all of this other these other types of questions we can definitely work out okay i think the hardest one will be like you know, if Natasha's in all the way in Florida, I don't know how that, <laughs> that would work. But, you know, you're, Three hours you're, away. If you're in New Jersey. It can all be worked out. I would say so. Don't worry. <laughs> right. Rhea, you've had your hand up for a while. You should go ahead. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I have a few questions. I was curious if you could share the PowerPoint link with us so we would have access to continue viewing that. Also, I was curious if you have the measurements to the space. It's about 40 by 40, but I can get something more exact if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, we'll get we can get uh we can get that. So is that something that all of you would want to have yes. in advance to know? Right. Okay. All right. We'll definitely we'll we'll go so, get that. So we can even if we will make a templates. So we need the exact size of the space so we can calculate the size of the parts of the space. Would be great to know everything about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. as it is now, it's not a perfect square. I don't know if you saw on the it's on the small. picture, it's mm -hmm. slightly skewed on one side where it's slightly jutted out. So if you want to think about that in your design. um, Also, uh, I don't think we focused on that much. The crosswalk will have lines in them and you have to avoid those lines. We're not going to paint over crosswalk lines. So your art will be relegated into the spaces between those. Um, So think about that. We also want with a border a little, with the border away. with a border. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with a little bit of a border. Um, uh, uh, MUTCD says six inches. Um, so like roughly around that, around your piece. Think about that. The um, one thing I did, we didn't talk about this yet earlier, but I was thinking it, as long as we get the city's permission, they could potentially, you know, like they're standard, right? Those white crosswalk lines. My thought is, are they willing to be flexible? Like in other words, rather than like the crosswalk that we normally think of, perhaps instead of it having like 10 lines, maybe it only have five. You know what I'm saying? Like, but maybe there'll be fatter white lines. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, so that's why like you guys be somewhat creative. And um, since you have the option to submit up to five, maybe you go with one that looks more standard. And then be more creative, you know, in, in one, you can go really creative. Um, so, so in other words, you could have a crosswalk where it looks like a normal crosswalk and your designs are in between, but they're obviously not going to be very big. Or maybe you can make one where the, the designs come outside of the crosswalk too. But just remember to leave some white lines. Those are reflective. So the reason why they're there is because at nighttime, the drivers will see that they may not be able to see your beautiful artwork right at night as much, but those bright white reflective lines are are very important to help. There is glow in the, the drivers. Yeah, so keep that in mind too. Keep the safety in mind, and that's why we kind of suggested maybe a simple symmetrical design because we don't know that, and we're going to have several judges. Just so you know, so some of the judges may be from the city, some of the judges may be from our company, some some of them might be like an engineering person. So just keep that in mind that there that we are going to be thinking of that as well as the beautiful art. We're also going to be thinking about how can people be safe. Like, will the design be beautiful, but also, you know, help people so that they're not getting hit like they are have been getting hit that intersection all the crashes it's terrible right that's if you counted that was 32 crashes in three years in that one intersection and i think the other intersection had like 50 crashes a block away so you can see a lot of people have been getting hit in the city of passaic which is really terrible so also, um, also no um we're not going to be using retro reflective paint that's actually against mutcd guidelines 
So it could be street paint, but but it can't have like those little glittery sparkles that you see sometimes in the street paint. Do you know what I mean? You guys know what I mean? When you're driving and you kind of see the street like reflect on you, you know what I mean? The street lines. Uh, yeah, we can't use those. That's actually against the the, the regulation of MUTCP. Um, well, that will be the white part, right? Yeah, that's the white part. It'll be in the normal normal street lines. We'll have that. Your design will not. So it won't glow in the dark, sadly. I'm sorry. Um, that's the only thing we can't assure. It'll be beautiful during the day, though. Is, Any other I have another question. Yes. Is there, were, were, were there a number, a selected number of artists that you invited to participate in this? Or did people sign up to apply for this opportunity? We try to do our best to promote it. Honestly, our first two webinars were not well attended. So I think yesterday we all kind of went crazy. That's why you saw my email. I emailed like as many artists as I could find in New Jersey yesterday. Um, we've been putting it on our social media. We don't have many followers. But yeah, if you guys know other people that you think would be interested, I mean, you probably are like, why would I have want to share this with competitors? But if you are open to sharing it with other people that you know that would be into this, we would love that. Oh, Gen Z's, okay, actually, why don't we just say it? 35 by 38 by 40 by 38 feet. is the perimeter of what? The intersection line. Like the size the inside the crosswalk. Yes. Is this with the six inches of space we're supposed to leave or without it? I was going to say, I'd rather have the six inches of space. To say something totally exact, we would have to go in person. So that would probably take like, Sometime. It's not going to be totally exact. Yeah. And there are parts where, um, you know, there are other things that we're going to have the engineer in the city is going to do a drawing because there are other parts of the street, right? Like there might be the gutters or the, the drain, the drain part. You don't want to paint on that part. But, you know, just we're going to just be looking at your concept. And then for sure, whoever, you know, whoever gets selected, then we, we can get down to the real nitty gritty with the measurements. But for this part of it, you know, don't feel, I don't think you have to like worry about the exact measurements, just go with your artistic concept. And then, you know, once the winner is selected, then the, that person is going to have to like deal with the real measurements, you know, but like, yeah. don't stress out about, I don't think you should worry and stress out about that right now. Like, All right. I think you had mentioned something about training this, um, getting this opportunity come with some sort of training or? Um, well, yes, you could be invited to the Bloomberg webinars. So they, they are having webinars for all of the winners, uh, the 25 winners. And for sure, once the artist is selected, that artist will be part of our team. And we'll, we would love to have you come if you can to the, to the different trainings. Like they, they just set up one. I don't even remember when it was, honestly. Um, does anybody else remember? I feel like there's one this month. Hold on, let me look at my calendar. But I mean, for us, you may not get to this next one because we're not even going to be starting the selection process till after the 18th. Um, but I mean, I think most of the other places haven't even gotten as far. Like we are in the beginning. They told us we're like ahead of the pack and it, we have some experience doing this. So, uh, and we have certain deadlines. So a lot of the people, they may not even have picked their artists until like later this spring. They may not be painting until the fall. We're trying to get it done before the summer because that's when more people are walking and biking. So it'll be, you know, it's more important for it to happen ideally before it gets too late in the fall. Because once it gets really cold, nobody's really um going. Yeah, it looks like they they set up a webinar for us on the 21st, but I don't I don't even know if I know what it's about. So it might still be more about like planning stuff for the the awardees. It might not be about anything about like the art stuff yet. My guess is that will be a little bit later. But I'm not sure. But you know, we'll try to get whoever it is involved, and we still have to figure out even our other some other processes. So, <laughs> but yes, but it's probably going to be virtual, right? Because the awardees are coming from 
Canada and Mexico. So it's not like it's going to be an in-person training. Does that answer your question, Ria? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more question. I have uh, uh, my yeah. first probably. Yeah, uh, how many days after the due date of the designs, how many days do you think it will take to announce the winner? That's a good question. And that's something like we need to actually figure out in the next week and a half. Um, I would say that we're probably going to try and pick the winner by the end of February because we don't have that much time. We've got, we've got March and then mid April, we're hoping to already start installing. So we're going to do our best to pick the winner by the end of this month. 